Hi, howdy, hey, y'all. I'm here with a spoiler-free discussion and absolute fangirl over the best book that I have read in the past year, possibly in the, my whole life. And all you romance fans out there, all you old romance fans who have abandoned it and have just become disenchanted with the direction that the whole genre is going, and to you folks who don't know if you like romance yet and just want to dip your little toe in the romance pond, I am here to tell you that if you haven't read The Kiss Quotient yet, you have to! So The Kiss Quotient is very steamy and very sexy. So if you aren't 18 or more mature, I wouldn't recommend you read this book. It has very adult themes um, and is very sexy, but that's why I like it. So The Kiss Quotient follows a woman named Stella Lane and a man named Michael Fan. Now my biggest gripe with the romance genre in general is uh, for some reason, writers can't think of like believable names. Not that they're normal or weird, but I read books with like the name like Peaches McGillicuddy and Ash La Lay La La Sunshine. Like, come on, you can't think of names that don't automatically like boot me out of the story. Like, come on, Stella Lane is a name that I can believe that belongs to a woman that actually exists in the world. So Stella is a woman I want to read about. She is on the spectrum. She has Asperger's and she has a very well paying job. She is very educated, very smart, such an interesting woman. I was like, it's about time that someone wrote uh, a, a woman that wasn't like waiting for a cowboy or abducted by a Scottish Lord. Like, come on, this is the kind of stuff I want to read about. And the man is Michael Fan. He is Vietnamese, he is an escort, and no spoilers, but it's on the back, the little blurb, that Stella hires Michael Fan to teach her about sex so that she can be a normal person and she can like be in a relationship with like normal people. Um, and Michael is Vietnamese. I gotta tell you, I don't know what you guys, I have never read a book where a Vietnamese guy was written so eloquently, so sexily, oh my goodness, and so deep and complex as a character. He has his own problems and he has very noble intentions and he's just a really great guy. He's someone that I care about and I learned to care about him very quickly. Um, he was just amazing. Um, I don't know about, I mean, comment below if you can think of any Vietnamese men or any Asian men written at all who are portrayed the way that Michael is. In regards to the romance part of this book, y'all, it is good. There is slow burn for days, but what I love about it is that there's a reason for it. There's a very believable motivation for slow burn other than just to slyly trick the reader, which I feel like a lot of romances try to do. Like they just want slow burn for the sake of slow burn and not actually have it mean anything. But Michael's lessons, guys, they make me blush. And I've read this book like close to maybe 10, 12 times every time. With Michael and Stella and the concept of an interracial relationship, when I was first reading it, I was kind of worried how it was going to unfold. Like, oh my gosh, is this going to be like another one of those movies, another one of those TV shows where the conflict is a miscommunication of the language and a misunderstanding of the culture. I was so excited to see that that was not the case here. Helen Huang writes the conflict to be Stella's inability to connect with all people, whether or not she speaks their language. And 
that doesn't seem like such a major thing, but for someone who is Vietnamese and in an interracial relationship, it's just not that awkward and not that bad if you don't speak the language. And I just think that Helen Huang writes it very respectfully and very believably, which is hard to do. One major concept I really loved about the book that really hit home for me and was very personal that was left out actually, whether intentional or not, I'd love to ask Helen Huang if it was, with the idea of a Vietnamese family and identity revolving around the Vietnam War. Now, I have come in contact with and read a lot of books and articles regarding the before, during, and aftermath of the war, which is a very important time in our history. But I think there's a severe lack of stories and media really portraying Vietnamese people as more than just the war they survived. Like my parents are immigrants and they came to America without any English, without any money. They'll tell you all about it. I can get them to tell you, it's a very interesting story. But my parents built something amazing out of nothing and they're thriving and they're happy and they're interesting and have such colorful personalities and their own interests and opinions that have nothing to do with the war. and. Even though I know they'll never forget that time in their lives, I am so happy to see something celebrate the individuals that survived the war as opposed to all of the ideas as a whole. If I were to critique this book, which I don't have very much because I think it's absolutely perfect in every single way, and you guys now know why I like <laughs> love it so much it's so personal but my boyfriend uh, was uh, overhearing when I was listening to the audiobook and he scoffed at Michael's dialogue like guys don't really talk like that and I was like hey it might not seem real but hiring like a, a sex escort teacher guy doesn't sound very real either it doesn't have to be real it just has to be um hot and Helen Wang writes it very very sexily and is the best sex writer I have ever read and I've read a lot so that's my obsession with the kiss quotient if you haven't read it yet go bless your own lives and fill your hearts with all the love and joy that you deserve and if you have read it guys Am I right? Amazing. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.